Good morning and welcome to Morning Java. We are here at Bigham Tavern at our Middle Light special event where we're talking all things Pittsburgh sports. But today for Morning Java, I'm Chris Carter here with Alex Stump and we're going to be talking Pittsburgh Steelers, getting you ready for the Steelers matchup with the Bengals at Paul Brown Stadium. Now Alex, the Steelers coming off a rough loss. It's 21 to 7 to the Browns. They get another divisional opponent. This one winless. They got Brian Finley at quarterback. They're, they're struggling for answers, but the Steelers are hurt up. I think that the Steelers, this is one of those crazy games that you think they should have in, in their pocket, but with all the injuries they suffered, Juju's most likely out, Connor's most likely out. What is your read on where the Steelers are going into this game? Well, I think what they really need to do without Juju, without Connor, is get the tight ends involved. And this is something that you've been writing about for Classroom the last couple days. And I kind of want to get your feel on this also. Uh, Vance McDonald. Yeah. He hasn't been as involved in the offense as I think people would like, mm -hmm. as well as his skill set would dictate. Yes. How much is that to blame on Fickner? How much is that to blame on Rudolph? How much is that to blame on McDonald? So I think part of this you have to look at separation-wise. If you go to NFL Next Gen Stats, you can look up receiver stats, and they keep track of for every target how much dis how much of the average distance and yards of separation a receiver gets when making a catch. As in how, how far are you away from the closest defender when you make a catch? Vance McDonald rates seventh in the NFL right now in that. Now granted, tight ends get a bit of an advantage because people back off tight ends because of their size. But even among tight ends, he's fifth. So he's actually doing a good job generally of getting open for Mason Rudolph. I find it a few things. One, Rudolph is still unsettled in where he goes in the playbook. He's still often checking down when he thinks he's in trouble. Um, two, I don't think it's Randy Randy Feekner because there's several times that I see Vance McDonald running a drag route and he's open and not targeted or if he's there. It's also funny because Vance McDonald, for all the numbers that are down this year, he's tied for the most touchdown receptions for the Steelers with three. But again, it's just three receiving touchdowns that, uh, that that someone's leading for the Steelers. That's the state of this offense that's, you know, one of the worst in the league right now. So I think the tight ends are part of the answer, but part of it has to be Mason Rudolph sort of taking the game plan and saying, look, I know my receivers are going to attract a lot of attention. We got to attack the middle of the field. And Mason Rudolph, statistically, if you look at his passing charts week to week, the middle of the field is one of the areas he does not do well in, especially deep down at the middle of the field. And I think we saw that. We talked to the past about how he struggled to go through his reads. It's taken him a while. It takes all rookie quarterbacks yeah. a while. And I think we really saw that in Cleveland with all the sacks. I mean, some of those were on the O-line. A lot of them were him just holding on to the ball yep. too long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing with the Browns game is that people, you know, I, I also wrote about the offensive line this past week. And my, you know, my, my point was there are simple solutions to the problem with the offensive line. For one, the offensive line hasn't stunk this year. A lot of people have, you know, said, oh, they stunk this year. They've regressed. Sure, they've regressed. They lost Marcus Gilbert. You know, everyone's a little bit old. Order. My, Matt Filers are starting right tackle, and you know Ramon Foster is definitely not as 100%. But Pouncey and DeCastro are still 1A and 1B of the offensive line. Villanueva hasn't had his best season, but as a whole, they're still giving up the third fewest sacks in the NFL right now. And that's with the last two games giving up seven sacks to a team that's led by Aaron Donald and another team that's led by Miles Garrett. So I think that when you take all that into consideration, they're doing just fine. The problem that I had with the offense was in the second half of the game when the line did make their adjustments because early on they were getting beat. In that second half, you saw, oh, you're bringing the extra blitzer? Hey, well, we're ready for that. We're communicating. They're, they're, they, they, made those, they made those improvements and taken those steps. Rudolph still hasn't really stepped out of his own element when he's been frazzled. And you could see he was frazzled in the game, especially with how the game ended. So you could see how that game sort of developed and the frustration that was in him. What I think Rudolph has to do, especially in this upcoming game, he has to come in confident. You know, there's going to be all the talk, you know, the, the accusations made against him by Miles Garrett, who said that he used a racial slur. Um, whether, or not that's, whether or not that's true, those type of things are going to be hanging over a young player's head. Like, he's going he's gonna, to think he has to find a way to focus, he has to find a way to make the plays, and he has to stick to his reads and not do the things that help an offense crumble like he did against the Browns. Some of those early on wasn't too mad about the Morgan Burnett interception. He tried a deep ball. It didn't work out. But there were several mistakes as he continued against the Browns that killed his team. And he can't make those mistakes against the Bengals team. That being said, I still like the Steelers' chances. Ryan Finley's been really – you think Mason Rudolph's been struggling at quarterback? Ryan Finley's even worse. He can't even complete the five-yard outs that the Bengals are asking him to. So 
I'm going to give my prediction. I want to get yours after that. All right. I think the Steelers are going to win 13-3. to I think it's going to be completely low scoring, and the defense of the Steelers might be, might be what, who, who puts them into the end zone. But I think it's going to be low scoring, and the Steelers' defense is going to control the game. They just have to stop really Joe Mixon. See, I was real close. I was thinking 16-10 to 10 Steelers. Yeah, I can see that too. I can see that. And I can see the Bengals putting up a score. But I just I think with the way that their quarterback's been running, I think the Steelers are fresh are, are angry right now. So uh, they're going to be looking for answers themselves, and they know that they have to win this game, and then they're coming back home to play the team that just embarrassed them on national television. But we'll get all into that. We'll have our guys at the game at Paul Brown Stadium doing a Java for our next episode for Monday morning. Thanks for watching. Keep checking us out.